Hey, Randy, thank you so much for joining me today. I want to say just huge high fives to the quick reaction of my TT getting set up for these awesome summer classes. Will you tell us a little bit about you and what is mentoring you through technology? Um, Randy Carter, I'm executive director for Mentoring Youth Through Technology. We're a nonprofit organization that provides hands on technology services to youth ages 6 to 18, robotics, coding, game development, all that cool stuff. Trying to get kids more involved in the area of STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. So that's, that's who we are. Absolutely. Those are critical fields. Those are high money fields. That is really where the job market globally is bringing us. And I've been so impressed by your initiatives and the time that's spent and the success stories from my TT. Uh, so with all of these things changing so rapidly with school systems, after school programs, summer program changes being announced, what is my TT doing to maneuver and still be able to help students through quarantine and COVID-19 and just technology in general? Uh, we've set and implemented policies and procedures with regards to quarantine and cleaning and sanitizing all this equipment and doing all this stuff, stuff on one end, um, but we are also setting it up that we can do virtual classrooms now um, because a lot of the schools and nonprofits and municipalities that we deal with they really want to set up something virtually. So we're, we're setting up virtual classrooms that they can do the robotics and coding and stuff, and we can teach it from wherever. Um, so that's what we're working on right now, getting set up for all of that. And Very cool. It's glad to, I'm glad to hear that there is a way to still service our students and keep them learning through all of these quick changes. Uh, and I think, honestly, this is the generation that's going to be able to pivot and maneuver so much faster because they're growing up with this and it becomes their norm. So what are some of the tools that you've implemented uh, in your program to keep everybody connected, both on the staff side as well as for your students? So we, we use Google Classroom and um, most of Google products um, to, to utilize that. I know a lot of people have been having some challenges with Zoom and things of that nature, but from a classroom perspective, Google Classroom, it, it's a platform that allows us to collaborate with the kids and, you know, put all the classwork there and do all of this stuff. So um, that's currently what we use. Um, it, for some, it's going to come easy. For some, it's going to be a challenge. Uh, we've just donated computers because there's a lot of youth in certain communities that do not have tech, have the technology at home, right? So they don't have laptops or computers and things of that nature. So um, we've been donating some computers to uh, some communities and some youth uh, because some of them are doing work at home now with school out, you know. And uh, so we've been trying to help in that area. So, Absolutely. Yeah. There's a disconnect as far as accessibility to technology in so many communities uh, all over America. I know I've heard the same thing from Chicago, Atlanta, Memphis, Dallas, Miami. Uh, there's just not every student has a laptop or a tablet at home to be able to jump on YouTube or jump on these online classes. These are, are uh, challenging times right now, so we're just trying to get in, help out where we can, and do as much as we can to kind of you know, get through this crisis uh, together. Absolutely. So that is a major benefit of getting students that otherwise wouldn't have the opportunity connected with the hardware and software they need. Tell me about some other positives uh, either going on now or that you anticipate in the upcoming months. This is changing the landscape of how we do kind of like everything, right? So, you know, the colleges, they were already moving to virtual classrooms and, you know, they were already moving to that prior to any of this happened, but, you know, middle school, high school's doing it. They weren't there, right? So now this has changed everything. You know, we talk about social distancing. So most of our classrooms throughout the U.S., 20, 25, and I've heard stories of even 30 kids in a classroom. Yes. So from my understanding, what I'm getting feedback from, from school districts that we work with and other uh, organizations that work with youth is that number's about to drop dramatically. So if they can get it down 12, 15 students a class and rotate them somehow, you know, that's what they're trying to do as well as try to utilize and integrate as much technology um, as possible. 
smaller mm-hmm. class sizes are crucial. That means each student is going to get more individual attention and be able to really grasp concepts that they probably wouldn't have the time or opportunity to ask those questions before. So that is absolutely a positive. If done correctly, right? So every community or every school doesn't have the the resources, right? Mm-hmm. So that's that's a huge challenge when you start dealing with school districts or schools that are in certain areas compared to some that are in other areas that do not have the infrastructure set up to do a lot of this. Yeah. So what do they, what do you do for them? Right. So um, that's what we try to do, help them as much as possible. They- and every school district is different. We have thousands of districts across the U S and each of them have their own set of rules, restrictions, challenges, and even just outlooks and resources on how they feel about implementing technology and what type of resources that they realistically have. Um, I think we've been put in a position where everybody's kind of fighting and grabbing for what they need as quickly as possible, um, where other districts may have already had a leg up and had moved forward with some of these things. So it is, definitely challenging and for the students that need us the most we're scrambling to get them as much as we can as fast as we can uh a quick story i'm I'm, uh i used to train go to schools and train for smart boards when smart boards first came out i'm smart board certified and the younger generation was they were for it some of the older generation teachers they were not you know it was like, listen, just move that out of the way. Let me use my whiteboard or let me right. use my chalkboard. You know, so from, you know, from having to go strictly digital and video and virtual classrooms and all of that stuff now, it's going to be a little bit challenging for some of them. But um, we'll get through it. That's fair. I appreciate that. For any of you teachers or students that need some help with Google tools or just integrating it into tech, never hesitate to reach out to us. We've got classes set up for all of that. We'd be happy to help out, give you some pointers. And of course, if you want to enroll into a traditional class to increase your familiarization, we're here for you. On the other side of that, Randy, how can we support MyTT, their mission, and really reach out and directly impact your students in a positive way? Uh, For those that want to continue to support our efforts, they can go to our website, uh, www.m ytttil.com and they can go to the donate page and they can donate if they'd like. Uh, if you want to donate equipment or whatever you want to donate, um, that's fine too. Uh, we always uh, are, uh, we refurbish and set them up and donate them to other kids that may not have uh, equipment um, in some of our communities. So please do what you can, reach out, See how you can support these entities. There are for-profit and non-profit uh, systems and programs out there that are really just trying to make sure that our youth has what they need to move forward with their education so that they're not kind of stuck. You don't want their brain on quarantine as well, uh, even while they're staying home. Randy, if you could give one tip to parents out there during this time, uh, what would you suggest to our new stay-at-home parents that are also now stay-at-home teachers, who are using the technology that they might not be familiar with to keep their students uh, in the right direction. Keep them engaged. There's some virtual class. We'll be offering some possible virtual uh, classes this summer that we're working on right now. Um, You know, these are the students that are going to be making the technology that we'll be using in the upcoming years. So the more uh, exposure that we can get them now, the more integrated to the whole language, the jargon, the familiarity, Uh, the better that they are suited to be really successful in the upcoming years. Uh, What we're going through right now is temporary, but to set them up for success in a career is critical. So make sure that uh, parents, teachers, even students yourself, use this time to improve your skills, grab uh, new technology, and dive into it. Do that with my TT. They have an amazing program. I've had the opportunity to mentor some of their students. I'm always blown away by how much they know.